Actually, CPHS 6 is on the air, but today we're in the air, sort of. We are at the Prop Busters Club, which is at the Goodles County Park. And so we're going to take a look at all kinds of planes and interview some people and find out what exactly goes on here by flying these planes, which are all behind us. I'm Edward Senek, and I'm here with Todd Litke, who is president of Prop Busters. What is Prop Busters? Prop Busters is basically a group of guys that got together, and we like to fly our model airplanes, and that's what this is all about, coming out, having a good time, and uh, just having fun. That's what it's all about. So what exactly will be going on here today? Uh, we got uh, we got combat airplanes with uh, ribbons on the back, and the object is to cut the ribbons off. That doesn't always happen. We always get midair. Sometimes it happens. Um, we got a uh, plane that's gonna be dropping candy for the kids. We got helicopters. We got giant scale airplanes. We got small airplanes. We got uh, we're gonna be shooting paintballs at airplanes and uh, we got everything going on here today. Now, tell me a little bit of history. How long has this been going on, this club? Uh, this club, well, we've been here at Goodles Park now for, we've been here for like five or six years now, and uh, they've been gracious enough. We used to be the Yale Prop Busters. Uh, we used to fly in a farmer's field out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, we've always had a fun fly event. It's been going on since, uh, well, probably the late 80s, is, is the when the this club originally started. So, it's been, it's been some time. Now, of all the planes that I've seen around here, this one, is the biggest one that I've seen. Can you tell me about this? Sure, it's a 100-inch uh, wingspan. It's called a Hangar. It's a Sukhoi. It's SU-31. It's made by a company called Hangar 9. Uh, it is pre-built. All the coverings already all done when I get it out of the box. I have to put all the radio equipment into it. And uh, you're you're looking at uh, 100 inches of wingspan. It's got an 80cc gasoline engine under the cowl. Um, it has smoke, it's fully smoke capable, it's got a smoke system and uh, a lot of power and a lot of time and a lot of skill to fly one of these aerobatic models. Now a lot of skill, you've been doing this for how long? Um, I started flying back in the early 90s and uh, I was kind of on and off and uh, once I got out of high school I kind of let it all go for a little while but I picked it back up in 2000 and uh, uh, I've been flying giant scales for quite a while now. It's been probably two, three years I've been flying giant scales. Thank you. 
Now I'm here with Bud Yakum. Now, Bud, uh, how long have you been doing this? Uh, about 30 years. 30 years, and uh, is this like a hobby that started out, or? Uh, I, originally, I joined the River District Arse Eagles, and it was started by Dave Goodman, who had a hobby shop in Marysville 30-some years ago. Well, then the club has been going on, and we're flying out here today at the invitation of the Prop Busters uh, for their fun fly. And my two sons are here also. We were just flying combat, and uh, they got into it when they were 11 and 12, and they're, I better not tell their age. They're going to add 30 to that, you know. <laughs> Anyway, it's, that's about, that's how long I've been in it. Now, you were in this, just in this combat uh, aerial right. battle, right? Right. Now, how is that? How is that to keep your concentration on where the planes are at, well, cutting off want, the ribbon? <laughs> you want to watch your own plane, and uh, if somebody's close to you, you have some peripheral vision, so you can see coming into the view, and then you can go for them. But it's, you mainly you want to watch your plane, because if you take your eye off of it, it's pretty hard to find it again and you lose the plane. And we've been doing combat for uh, 12 years. My son and I, one of my sons and I started in 92. And uh, the plane that he and I are flying, he makes. But you can fly anything, you know, that, anything you're willing to lose, frankly, because you just saw the midair. And uh, that happens quite often. You're actually going for the ribbon. But in reality, everybody likes to get another plane. It's kind of animal flying. <laughs> okay, I'm here with Rob Yakum, and Rob, uh, I know that you, as a 11 or 12 year old, was uh, got interested in this with your father, and now you have your sons here, and you have your sons Robbie and Devin. Devin. Okay, so Robbie is going to try to learn how to use a plane, and this is what's called a trainer. That is correct. Okay, so if you could just tell the audience just exactly what these controls do so that just like Robbie I can also learn about how to start flying a plane. No problem. Uh, first this stick is used to control the engine. Basically that's in the thr uh, full throttle position. That's in an idle position so when you go to take off you'll go to full throttle and if you're going to land you will go all the way back on the stick to idle so you can bring the plane in. Also on the same stick controls the rudder. This is considered a four channel uh, airplane which you have throttle, rudder which is moving that tail surfaces which basically moves the airplane in this position. This stick is used for the up and down position. You can see the elevator going up which will make the airplane go up. Pushing the stick down will make the airplane go down. This is called the ailerons which are the surface, the moving surfaces on the wing. This will make the airplane go right. This will make the airplane go left. So if you're flying the airplane in the air you're going to be half throttle to full throttle and as you make turns you will go left or right while giving some deflection on the up and just basically fly the airplane around. Now why do they call this a trainer? Uh, typically a trainer is going to be a high wing, a little slower, more docile, uh, designed to uh, be able to be a lot more forgiving than a traditional performance airplane would be, uh, uh, be able to do. And with a high performance airplane are the the parts, if you were to smash them, they'd probably cost more on a, on a performance airplane. Typically, a performance airplane is going to be a little more expensive construction. This is probably all balsa, maybe some foam. Uh, your higher performance airplanes are going to be a fiberglass um, and a higher performance engine, uh, higher performance radios, things like that. So as you get bigger and faster, things go up in cost. Now, Robbie, how old are you? Eight. Eight. And are you kind of nervous about being out there ready to start flying this? No. No, no, not at all. Have you been wanting to for a long time? Yeah. <laughs> all right. He had his airplane when he was uh, at his seventh birthday, and he's been flying for a little over a year. He actually can take off and land and fly. And you, are you all set to go, Devin, for a ride on this? Uh, no, you're going to wait. <laughs> he needs a little bit more size to, to be able to hold the radio. they got to be able to hold the radio before they can learn. But one of the things they've learned that was really good is the computer programs uh, make a huge difference. They basically can learn off a computer and come out within a few flights be able to fly an airplane. Oh. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, and good luck to you, Ravi. Thanks. Thank you. I'm here with John Yakum. And John, uh, you've uh, been flying for a long time, so I guess from hearing from your father. Yeah, good 20, 25 years years and uh, I just seen you out here in combat and what happened out there 
Uh, basically, me and another guy, uh, head of midair, we call it. You're typically trying to chase a ribbon and cut a ribbon, but typically you try to fly into the other aircraft, and obviously, from what I did, I hit the other guy dead nuts on. So, Would it be anything to do with the uh, wind? I mean, it is quite windy. Do you have to uh, try to work with the wind or what? Yeah, it's pretty windy today. Those big wings, you see the wing is about a six-foot wing. It doesn't take much for the wind to flip it around in the air, so you have to watch what's happening. You can get disoriented. The plane can be upside down on you. Some of that was... Uh, happening up there today, but really ultimately what happened was I flew right into him. And now we see the pieces down there, and so we just want to know is now is that in the, is that going to be like an expensive uh, fix? No, the plane itself. I build the planes. I kit the planes. Uh, they retail for about 40 bucks. Um, so you got about 35, 40 dollars of the material that's basically throwaway. Then you reuse your engine and some of the radio. I have some radio damage too, a couple servos, but ultimately. It's about a $40 impact to, to, the, to the wallet, so. Okay, thank you very much, John. Thank you. Thank you. And now I'm with Kurt Churchill. Now, Kurt, uh, how long have you been doing this? I uh, been flying now for going on four years. Four years. Now the staff told me that as uh, they were walking by, you were able to describe all these different planes that are out here. How many planes do we have out here? Oh, I'd say there's pretty close to 75 airplanes out here at the present. And price range? I mean, they they can be pretty cheap, like a seven dollar one I saw back here. Yeah, you can build one of these coroplast gutter pipe airplanes for in the ten dollar range, and then your electronics and motor will set you back another 150 dollars or so. You know, you're out here for the first time, you got the remote in your hand, uh, how long does it take to actually get the feel of what's going on? Well, as a beginner, you should really come out and take lessons. I taught myself to fly, and then I acquired a home trainer unit for the computer called Real Flight. It's uh, about the price of one airplane, 
uh, $199, but it's got a space bar. You, <laughs> if you crash, you hit the space bar, you got a brand new airplane. Uh, with this flight simulator, anybody can learn how to fly. We've had probably four or five guys that have never flown before in their lives. They went out and bought this flight simulator, played with it at home, come out here soloed the first day. Um, if you want to learn on your own, it could be you know, kind of cost prohibitive, but it can be done. But we recommend coming out and getting free training. We offer free training here to anybody that wants to learn how to fly. Now, what kind of plane will you have out here today? Today I've got what's called a big stick. It's a 60 size airplane, meaning it uses a 60 size airplane engine. And then we've got a, I've got a gutter pipe uh, target plane. We're gonna have a little contest out here for the amateur shooters with a paintball gun. We're gonna try to see who can hit this airplane in the air. Um, it should be very interesting. We so you're actually gonna have people out here with paint guns taking pot shots at this plane? Uh, a lot of pot shots, yes. That's the plan. <laughs> and the winner gets what? If you hit the tail of the airplane with a target on it, you win free flight training until you solo. Wow, very good. Thank you very much, Kurt. Thank you. Well, we talked to a lot of the airplane pilots, but now for something special, we have a helicopter pilot. With me is Carl Jones. Carl, you did some very impressive flying out there. How long have you been doing this? Uh, this is about my fifth year of flying. And uh, a unit like this, I mean, how much would something like this cost for a beginner to go into to start flying? Uh, all depending on what you get, uh, you probably want to start in the 30, but you're probably looking at around $1,200 to get everything you need, helicopter and flight equipment. Now, did you fly a plane first and then said, I want to get into this, or did you just go right straight for the helicopter? Uh, I started just with helicopters. I always wanted to, to fly something RC, and helicopters are cool, so that's what I started with. Now, you did some, you know, sometime, and not even loop-de-loops, -loops, but also you just made that helicopter just right upside down. Now, was this something that uh, you've made had accidents in the past or any other <laughs> war stories you could tell me about? Oh, yeah, I've uh, unfortunately put many helicopters in the ground. Uh, good thing with them versus planes is, uh, since it's not balsa, is you buy parts and you rebuild it and start all over again. Now, I also, I heard with you talking to other people that uh, you were flying this in the house, too, so uh, how careful do you have to be with you, as you said, with your wife not seeing something like that going on? Yeah, uh, I, I've done that. It's, it's not the, the nitro power. It's more the electric. They're really small, and you can get away with it. I wouldn't recommend flying a glow in there just because of the fumes. You know, that, that wouldn't be smart. <laughs> Also, too, that a lot of the planes have stayed grounded today because of the wind that's been here. And obviously, you didn't have any trouble at all flying, but uh, do you have to uh, watch out for that? I mean, is it something that you actually have to overcompensate for? Uh, yes, and with a strong wind like this, it does affect it. Uh, when you're flying into the wind, uh, the helicopter is fighting in it and it goes slow, but when you turn it into the wind, it takes off like a bullet. So uh, it does affect it and you have to compensate it. But most of the time you just see it in the hovering. When you're trying to hover, it'll push the helicopter around. But with the larger ones, it handles it a little bit better. Um, so, but you know, living in Michigan, it's windy a lot. So you just gotta learn to fly with it. And you not only have one, but what do you have, like three over there? Yeah, I got three. You know, it's just like airplanes. Once you get the bug, you start collecting them too, so. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Carl. Thank you. planes are built for speed and some are made for aerial acrobatics and some are made with kids in mind like the candy drop bomber which not only has a gas engine like you'd find in a weed whacker but it also holds four pounds of candy in its belly and when those kids see the bomb bay doors open well now that's an air raid so there you have it in this world of airplanes the pilots stay grounded but the sky's still the limit 
I'm Edward Senek. On behalf of Prop Busters, good night. Hey, boy,